I wanted to come to you today through video, through uh, whatever technology we have here at First Lutheran. Uh, that's, that's where we're at today, friends, uh, as the church is closed and many businesses are closed. And, and, uh, but we, we still care for you. We still are trying to reach out to you and, and just see how you're doing. With the schools closed and with the virus really out of control, and the hospitals are are very busy and uh, are over or, well, actually probably understaffed and overworked, and a lot of fear and panic. But I come to you with uh, with words of comfort and words of care and concern. And I want you to know that we are still here, even though the doors are locked. I'm here each day receiving any phone calls, emails, recording videos, uh, trying to figure out ways to reach out to you. Uh, if you have any concerns, uh, give us a call here at church, uh, email me. Uh, but today I want to do a service of Holy Communion. Uh, it, it'll be a, a, commun a service where you can uh, find a little bread in your kitchen and a little cup of uh, grape juice or a uh, little drink of some sort, and you can join me. And we'll talk about that. What does it mean to come to communion together? What does it mean to be connected through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? So I come today with, with a heavy heart with all what's going on in the world, but with, uh, with a certain uh, hope and a confidence that we will prevail. We will get through this. We will get to the other side. Life will go back to a sense of normal, normalness of uh, everyday routine. But until then, we look out for one another uh, and we care for one another. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desire to know, and from whom no secrets are kept, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. 
Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, sins that are known and sins that are unknown, things that we have done and things that we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you and serve one another in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich and is merciful and who loves you, forgives you all of your sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we pray for your people throughout the world, throughout the globe, through countries and cities and farmlands. We pray that this awful virus does not totally have control of us, but only you have control of all things. Be with all those nurses and doctors and people who work in nursing homes and people who are delivering food and who are trying to reach out for, to one another, those who are laying awake at night wondering what else they can do. But be with those who are at home, who are finding themselves to be impatient, not knowing what to do and just how to sit idle. Help us, O oh God, to grow closer to you. Help us to sit in silence and to listen to your voice as you speak to us. As you say, hush, peace be with you. Be with us these days, today and the days ahead, until we can be together again with all of your saints in light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading I have for you today I want to share comes from the Gospel of Luke the 22nd chapter, beginning with verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table, and the apostles were with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled, the kingdom of God. I will not eat it in, in to, or drink from this cup until the kingdom of God is fulfilled. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this cup and divide it amongst yourself. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom comes. Then he takes a loaf of bread, he gives thanks, and he gives it to all, and that they would break it and eat it, and said, this is my body, broken and given for you. When you eat, remember me. And he did the same with the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is poured out for you, a new covenant of my blood. Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate Holy Communion. If you have uh, some bread laying around your kitchen or on your table or some drink, uh, go ahead and get it. Set it on the table before you. See, Holy Communion is also known as the Lord's Supper. There are two items that are involved. There is the bread, and there is the cup, the cup of grape juice or wine. Jesus spent this time with his disciples before he would be crucified, before his body would be broken by human hands, but also by the cross. When Jesus walked the earth, he was a vibrant man. His body was full of life and breath. He was never sick. He was healthy. 
And then he was nailed to the cross. And, and as he was hanging on the cross, God put on him all of our sickness, all of our disease, all of our sin, that we would receive from Jesus help, life, new life. It is that Jesus gave his body, calls it bread. It is that Jesus gives his blood, calls it drink. It says, receive the health of my body and the health of my blood, poured out for you, that you would live a healthy life, a new life through me, because I died for you. See, it is that night that he took bread, he gave thanks, giving it to all to eat, saying, this is my body broken and given for you. Eat and remember me. And then after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, giving it to all the drink, saying, when you drink of this cup, remember me. Know that I am with you always. So you can join the body of Christ by simply receiving bread and drink. See, God and Christ that night used ordinary things, things that would have been on the table that night, like bread. They would have been having bread for supper. So he took bread and said, this is my body broken and given for you. It's a symbol of Christ. And they would drink from a cup, grape juice or wine. And he took the cup and he said, this is a symbolic symbol of my blood shed for you. And then when in Christ's teaching, he instituted it. He said, this is a sacrament. This is sacred. That whenever the church celebrates Holy Communion, this Eucharist service, this Lord's Supper, I am with you always. So it is today that Jesus comes to you through bread and through drink. Even though you're not here with me, but Christ is in your home with you. So when you eat with Christ, when you dine with Christ, know that your sins are forgiven, that new life is given to you through this sacrament. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup to share with us the great and promised feast. Come, Lord Jesus. So now you, we pray your Holy Spirit and receive our inheritance with all of your saints in light. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place until Jesus comes as victorious Lord of all, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us when we come into your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundant life, you have given us your body and blood. It is new life. It is eternal life. And we know that you are always with us, especially during these times, these times where it feels that our world is caving in where life has simply come to a halt. But we know, oh God, that you are in full control, that we can trust you, even though we are afraid and we're sitting in darkness. We know that you are the light of the world. We know that we can trust you and rely on you. And it is in this meal that you come to us. You are so ever-present. In your name we pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord.